Welcome, welcome, dear souls, on Holistic Love Show on Golden News TV. A beautiful opportunity to uh, explore more, to expand and evolve on a very, very particular period in our lifetime and with a very amazing guest that I've got here with us. And I just love to welcome Bruce Cryer. Welcome, Bruce. Thank you, Chrisula. It's so wonderful to see you again and be with you. Wonderful to have you. Uh, those of you that you may not have met Bruce before, uh, Bruce is uh, very much involved with the actual creation of one of the creators of HeartMath and the former CEO of uh, HeartMath. And part of his creative spirit, and we figure out why he's such creative spirit, <laughs> number seven and turquoise color is all about his own his own soul journey and, and life path uh, he's also the creator of renaissance human and uh, personally i've seen you bruce in action i've seen you singing and uh, we're going to be sharing a little bit about uh, bruce's uh, uh, love for uh, expression through the heart and connection through the heart and inviting you all to uh, be part of this colorful journey, the rainbow letters to Mother Earth, this community project that uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm leading, but with all of you life explorers responding to the calling. And this is, this is where we are. And one of the letters of rainbow is B, right? And uh, when I thought of, uh, what can we explore on today's uh, uh, exchange of soulful musings with Bruce Cryer? I just said to myself, we talk to me and connecting with our breath from my personal connection with Bruce, where as being one of, of the participants in, uh, in his work, an online course that he, he has run and he still runs, and part of the heart math uh, uh, training that I received and connecting with my breath was one of the, the beautiful things that I received from, from your training, uh, Bruce, learning to connect more with my breath. Uh, and, and I thought, I think under these circumstances, Bruce, that we are all going through, sometimes when we are so anxious and so uh, uncertain and full of doubt and full of worry, full of fear, um, fear of the unknown, fear of what's going to happen to us now or in the future, uh, what's what tends to happen, and we do that unconsciously, we actually forget to breathe. Mm -hmm. uh, we forget to connect with our hearts. We forget to create that inner space for us to, to feel that inner peace. And, and if there's one thing that uh, I, I would personally like to to teach our children, our young generation, and those of you who care for children and young people, is how you can look after yourselves as well, and you can look after your, your inner well-being and your breath, your connection with your heart. So Bruce is going to, we're going to explore a few things together here, and, uh, and let's see where, where the muse is, the, muse, the inner muse is gonna take us, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly yeah so so we, it, it is the expression i think expression from your heart and 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 the power of the breath is something that you really feel very much uh connected with bruce is that right is, is that something that yes absolutely um i think when i first began yoga practice many many years ago and was introduced to also uh, alternate nostril breathing in pranayama um, it's like, wow, that's, I've never done anything like this. What an interesting new world this is. And I, I could feel in, in yoga classes where that was emphasized a power of that. A absolutely. And that, wow, the breath really is like the channel for life force. Mm -hmm. And I could feel that. And, uh, then I drifted away from some of that practice and moved in some other areas, but, uh, in, in heart math work. Um, breath is absolutely a focal point of every heart math technique, really, mm -hmm. because I think one of the things we discovered, not we didn't discover this, but in our creation of tools, we wanted to uh, kind of leverage, if you will, or, or amplify the fact that our breath 
is a natural part of us that most of us are never conscious of. We just breathe. And thank goodness we're not in charge of it consciously because we would forget <laughs> and we would and we would die. So we are very fortunate that our autonomic nervous system kind of handles it for us. However, as you just pointed out, um, fear, especially fear, but any any intense stressful emotion like anxiety, panic, any of those things, not only are we kind of forgetting to breathe, it's like kind of frozen, almost paralyzed. And I find that even uh, if something is really concerning me, I mean, there, there's so many events in the news now and mm. things that people are going through, friends are going through that can, it can just hit you sometimes. And I'll, 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 you know, I'll feel really caught in, in the grief or the pain or whatever it, is, it may be and realize, okay, there I am. I'm kind of stuck there. I'm kind of frozen with that feeling. Just breathe now, just breathe, because what I want to do is be able to be loving to, or compassionate or forgiving or whatever is needed for that situation, or at least for me, mm -hmm. because I'm no good just frozen in fear. I can't, you know, if a saber tooth tiger was about to attack me, being frozen in fear, I could maybe strike out, <laughs> but that's not what's happening. <laughs> I'm not in danger of, of death by tiger. So why not, you know, take control because we have the power. And I think over the years, it's, uh, I've often talked about the breath as, you know, it's one of your best, it's going to be one of your best friends mm -hmm. and we've always had it. And we, we never had any thought that it could be a conscious thing. Yeah. Athletes do know that a lot mm -hmm. of athletes do know that because to, to excel in any athletic uh, uh, endeavor these mm -hmm. days and, and performers of almost every kind know about it too. And I, I, one of the things that was, was interesting to me when I left the world of show business, which you know I was an actor, singer, dancer, Broadway, when I was young. And when I left and I got into the world of business, I was shocked that business people spent so little time preparing themselves to perform, at, you know, which we all have to do every day, whatever our work is, because all athletes prepare, all performers prepare. You get yourself ready. You get yourself mentally right. Often breathing is part of that to help relax and release any tension. And somehow business people think we don't need that, but we'll work even longer hours. But we don't, we don't need to think about our heart or our breath or our, our soul. Let's just go, have a plan and then just go. An athlete would say, you know, that's crazy, right? <laughs> you know, that's probably gonna kill you. <laughs> and they'll say, yeah, I guess so, but I don't have any choice. Yeah, I gotta work hard because it's whatever. So yeah, uh, I can absolutely relate to the breath and, uh, and I'm using it as much as possible these days as my friend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, I, I would like us to uh, offer um, a little bit of a, uh, a little tool that you can take away with you uh, while you are still watching this here. And uh, you can, uh, for just a few minutes, to bring that power of um, the connection with your breath so i would i would like to i would like you to see that this is something that you have the choice to to connect with at any single point so it's not like that you have to have a sacred space which is beautiful to have of course and meditate uh, or have uh, it has to be done when you're doing yoga or any other mindfulness um training you may have or practice but what I like, I would like to, to, you know, to, to invite Bruce is to share a little bit how you can connect with your breath as a every day, every moment practice, really, you know, like in, in, in the way you, you experience life. And for us is actually to bring that practice in our families, to bring that practice in our classrooms, to bring that practice of connecting with the breath before we sit down and have dinner, for example, you know, to show our gratitude that we are alive, <laughs> to show our gratitude mm -hmm. that, you know, that this, this energy goes, you know, the, this, uh, this ebb and flow, you know, of energy, of breath coming in and out, uh, that every time that, you know, the, the breath goes in and goes out, it's just a sign that you are still alive, you're still part of this wonderful planet Earth, uh, and, and mm -hmm. show our gratitude and and if there is a moment when you feel panicky and you feel worry, that there's a way to bring back to your present moment and easily and with you know, much grace even to connect with that, 
because mm. it is it belongs to you it belongs to nobody else mm-hmm. <laughs> and then that's that's a that's for me it is empowering to to bring back yes. to that space uh, and sometimes we forget that everything else is ruled and regulated and controlled by somebody else out there but your breath is yours you can you can Mm. control your breath you can feel connect with your breath and just reassure yourself and affirm that i am safe i am okay at this present moment here and now i am safe Uh, and yeah there may be so many other problems and worries and so on what that was happening now so Mm. that's that's what that's what i like is to to connect this, you know, to connect with, with, it may sound very simple, but I guess the simple things in life, this is, this is what we really need, <laughs> isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. It seems to be the mind that loves to complexify things. Yeah. And that's its job. It's, it's designed to analyze and understand patterns and all that kind of stuff. But, but um, sometimes the simple, the simple power of something it's built into our system that we don't even have to, think about mm-hmm. it's gonna it's doing its thing regardless of, of what our thoughts are but but as as one of the heart trainers always used to say you have to breathe anyway mm-hmm. so why not do it in an intentional way that mm-hmm. involves your heart and involves your values and what you want what, what you want life to be because so, the breathing is going to happen anyway just just about every day yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I try, to, try to remember the day you didn't breathe you, you can't because you, that would have been the day you, the day you died so um, since you have to breathe anyway, why not have that become a tool mm-hmm. for your evolution, let alone your day-to-day pleasure in life, your day-to-day experience of life? Yeah. So yeah, happy to, happy to leave a little experience. Beautiful. And also you brought in another, another um, wonderful uh, word, intention, uh, yeah. which, you know, the, you know, whatever we're doing, you know, when we are setting an intention, and again, maybe you may, you may think your mind may think, well, I have a good time for this now. That 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 what you know your 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 mind will start thinking and saying, you know, I'm really busy here. I've got time to start setting extensions every single every single moment. But once I guess once we start practicing, it comes so natural to us, mm-hmm. and it doesn't. You don't need to make any effort, and that's what I. Uh, a few years ago, I read a book about effortless breathing, effortless living. And I mm. said, my goodness, you know, and then it was a stressful period in my lifetime. I was still teaching full time. And as we teachers, we have got so many different hats on and so many, lots of multitasking. And, yes. and, and then and I said, how can I make my life easier? And I can be, I can be of service as well to, to, to the people I to the teach, to the students I teach. So, so whatever you're doing, I guess, whatever, you know, Bruce is going to share with us just, just to have a taste really. Um, it's, it is to whatever practice you already got in place, um, that probably complemented, or you may feel, well, I haven't done it this way and I could try that way now. So I'm, I'm uh, open for you, open for you to receive whatever feels right for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Great. Well, I suspect knowing the people that would be attracted to you and, and Rainbow Letters to Mother Earth project, that many already do something, some mm-hmm. kind of breath practice. Um, so that's not a completely foreign concept, I'm sure. Um, what, what may be different in this process will be the focus around the heart at the same time as breathing. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, one of the things that I love, why I'm, as, as you and I've shared before about our, our mutual love of rainbows, um, when I read a book back 45 years ago called Nuclear Evolution, Discovery of the Rainbow Body. It was written by a British scientist and artist and entrepreneur who was, was connecting the colors of the rainbow to the seven chakras and writing a, a kind of scientific description of why that was so true, that the, the, each color absolutely was related to each chakra. And of course, the heart center um, being the color green. And, but I think even energetically, the fact that the heart is central, the heart center is central, three above, three below. And when we're focusing on the heart, we're awakening a kind of energy that allows us to go up in life and and to expand and to uplift and to grow. Down below is more the survival areas where we, where we have to be to survive. And and those are, are all essential energies. 
Um, but it's through the heart that we, they can also be allowed to rise mm -hmm. for our evolution, for our upliftment, our unfoldment, etc. Mm -hmm. So in this little practice, <clears throat> it involves focusing in the area of your heart, not on the organ, but more like the energy center. Mm -hmm. So no, just knowing that we have, a, we have all these centers that all have jobs to do in helping regulate the, the system of our body so that we are a fully functioning rainbow, <laughs> rainbow body. <clears throat> And the heart having a special function that's kind of just kind of a master function in a way to coordinate so much of our spirit and our soul and and and, and the body uh, functions too. So I invite everyone to close their eyes, mm -hmm. unless you're driving, in which case do not, and to to just relax now and bring your attention to the area of your heart. If you'd like to place your hand over your heart, feel free but it's not required. And now imagine you can draw energy and draw the air in through that center of your heart, breathing in as you do, breathe in through the heart. And now exhale, imagining a column of air passing out through the heart. And breathe in again through the heart. And breathe out through the heart center. And breathe in again through the heart. And breathe out through the heart. And just feel this ever deepening sense of relaxation and calm and balance with each breath. Breathe in. And now this time as you breathe in, breathe in life. Feelings and energy of the life itself as you exhale, inhale. And exhale out any tension, any tiredness, any anxiety, any stress. And breathe in life and gratitude. Feel grateful for this moment that we're having together. Inhaling. And exhale anything that no longer serves you. Any stress that's stored in your system that you know needs to go. Just let it go with your breath. And breathe in gratitude and life again. Inhale. And exhale anything that feels old or tired or weary or anxious. Just let it go. And breathe in through the heart. Now just in a more gentle rhythm on your own pace. But breathing in a little deeper than normal. And breathing out a little deeper than normal. And continuing to focus your inner attention in that center of the heart. Feel that center more and more awake, more and more alive. Drawing in this beautiful life energy allowing to leave your system any toxicity, any negativity you, that needs to go. And at some level, this should feel so right and feel so natural, not forcing anything, not straining, but just taking full breaths. And if at any point you find your awareness start to shift back to the head or the mind, just gently bring the attention back to the heart. Place your hand over the heart if that's helpful to you. And then just remember, just focus like a column of air coming in through your heart. And then exhaling out through that same invisible column of air. And now from this state of ever deepening calm <clears throat> and balance, I'd like us all to feel gratitude. Gratitude for whatever even unexpected gifts have happened to us lately, perhaps even today. Allow yourself to feel gratitude for a relationship that you are especially aware of how important that that person is to you and just feel the gratefulness for that beautiful heart and 
And keep breathing in this a little deeper than normal, a little slower than normal. And now feel grateful for yourself. Whatever you have been through these last months, it's been hard. It's been unrelenting. It's so unexpected. And yet we're here. And we've done better than we thought. So give yourself some gratitude, deep gratitude for every moment you were able to still love or still find peace or still find compassion. And be grateful that you are such an aware soul that you want to learn from those moments where that was hard. So be grateful that your soul brought you to this experience with this beautiful group about the rainbow of life. Be grateful for this moment now, all these hearts joined together in gratitude. And in a few moments, when I ask you to open your eyes and come back into the room, <laughs> I invite you to try to keep that feeling that wave of gratitude going in your system. So as you continue to breathe, which you will continue to do with your eyes open, try to keep the breath of gratitude going. Even as you listen to us talk, or whatever happens. So go ahead and open your eyes. Thank you all for opening up, being willing to join on that journey. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That was just the breath with some intention. Mm. That's in you. All of that's in you. As I say, reminding myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. it is it is uh, we need reminders we need reminders exactly we need uh, ways to uh, respond to to our needs and sometimes it's good to respond to other people's needs but we neglect to respond to our needs and just practice like this that was beautiful bruce thank you really mm, thank you thank you it's a pleasure, a joy to, to share that. Thanks for asking. Mm. And, and gratitude is, is such a powerful thing, isn't it? Just gratitude. And, and you know, a, a story I want to share that when we were first starting to speak, Priscilla, I haven't thought about this in many, many years, but when my daughter was about two and a half years old, mm -hmm. almost three, we were living in the Bay Area. My daughter is 33 now, so that gives you an idea how long ago this was. We were living in the Bay Area and <clears throat> a very, very large earthquake, the, the, the massive earthquake that hit the Bay Area. Uh, the epicenter was 10 miles from our home. Wow. Very, very close. And I was not at home when it happened, but my daughter and my, my wife at the time were together watching an animated cartoon called Land Before Time. And it was all about dinosaurs and something called earth shakes, which was really an earthquake. And at a certain point in the, in the film, you know, all this was happening on the screen. And then my little, not quite three-year-old daughter and her mother were watching and suddenly the TV is shaking and bouncing off its stand onto the floor and the whole house is shaking and it's a major earthquake. But for my daughter, it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my God, this is, and so she was kind of like, <laughs> my wife on the other hand was, this is freaking scary. And I was not at home, I was outside. Actually it was, 
the heart math, heart math did not yet exist, but it was coming. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, I'll just cut to the to the end, rest of the story. When I finally got was able to get home, I found them still huddled huddled in the doorway of the bedroom, where which was uh, thought to be the safest place. And over the next couple of months, I led a team and we produced a video about earthquakes. And part of it was safety because most people weren't prepared. And so, um, you know, many people died, many homes were destroyed, many business, many whole downtowns of cities were destroyed in California. It was quite a, quite a disaster. But afterwards, we, when we were making this film, my daughter, somebody, probably her mom had the idea, let's film our daughter and just see what she says. Mm-hmm. And we said, the first question was, so what would you tell people to do during an earthquake? Mm-hmm. And she said, just love whoever you're with. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute, so sweet. <laughs> and then, so I think I asked her something like, um, so that you just, just love everyone that you're with and just, yeah. just take care of each other. And she said, yuppie, yuppie. <laughs> I still say to her sometimes, yuppie, yuppie. Yuppie, yuppie. <laughs> because for, for her, for the, for the eyes of a child who had experienced what could have been an incredibly scary thing and probably was for many kids, but for whatever, whatever reason, it was an adventure for her. Even though the house was, was a shambles, things were destroyed, there was broken glass everywhere. The house survived, but um, a lot was damaged or destroyed. But for her, it was like, I had my mom, I loved her, she loved me, we were okay, and then dad got home and I loved him. And, you know, That's life it. is simple, life That's is simple. Yeah, yeah. And it would have taken me a while to get to such a simple realization, if ever. But yeah. for her, just love who you're with. That's mm-hmm. all. Yeah. Okay. Okay, <laughs> yes. Yes. That it, it pretty much applies to everything. That applies to everything, yes. And that applies to love is the answer and choose love. Yes. Choose love. And and also that children are our teachers and they have got that understanding of what love is and what rainbow color and love is and the magic and the wonder. Uh, and it is for us adults that we may have forgotten. We need to remember a little bit and, and, and bring that back into our lives. And, or even if we got in our lives, just be grateful for it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Yes, so there you are. There you are, dear ones. So uh, a little bit of a taste of uh, hard math breathing, hard math expression and connection with your own breath, with your own life, with your soul, with your essence, with your truth. And uh, a wonderful reminder to carry on practicing being in connection with your own breath setting an intention as often as you like, right? As often as you need. So many times I've been on a a challenging phone call or been in a a hard meeting that was the conflict was starting to happen. And I would remind myself, just breathe, just breathe. (laughs) You may may be the only one breathing right now, but you need to do it. And maybe that'll create a standing wave where others will. And of course, we know it's, it's more than breathing. But just that first breath can be the trigger. Like, ah, yes, there's this whole other world right there, just one breath away. And it's, am- it's amazing how mm-hmm. much, I mean, just one breath doesn't necessarily take us all the way as deep as we want to go. That may take several breaths, and especially engaging gratitude or love or compassion. But just that breath, and I think uh, is so profound. And I think I, I, you know, having been now a th- roughly 30-year practitioner of of daily hour by hour practice is involving the breath. Um, when I practiced it a lot in the early days, I would literally have my watch go off on the hour and practice breathing through the heart and feeling neutral and feeling love for someone like my daughter or my wife or a sunset or whatever it may be. 
just that. And I would do it every hour on the hour. My watch would re remind me with a little alarm. It annoyed other people, but I learned how to do it. And so before long, it felt like that's the natural thing to feel. Mm -hmm. The rest is the unnatural. Mm -hmm. But we've, we're, we've, we've got all the circuitry built up over years of trauma or anxiety or worry or whatever it may be. So that feels natural. The negative side, as, as one of the heart mass wonderful trainers used to say, we all have our favorite bad feeling, you know, our favorite go to <laughs> bad feeling. <laughs> and it's anxiety for a lot of people, or it's fear for a lot of people. Or, and it's a funny way to think of it your, your favorite bad feeling? <laughs> well, kind of, because you, you, you kind of use it more, more often than about anything else. <laughs> so it is kind of high on the list. So, but that's also, as heart math has shown, and other people like Joe Dispenza have shown, is mm -hmm. that. We're, we, every emotion we feel, circuitry has been built to feel that. Mm -hmm. And so it's so easy to go back to that because our physiology often is just living still in the past from the past trauma that wasn't released or the past fear or grief or anger, whatever it may be. Yeah. The circuitry is there and that what that's the stronger magnet, if you will. But as you start to practice this and start to gratitude doesn't feel odd or uncomfortable. It actually starts to feel like, oh, wait a minute. I think that's how I'm supposed to be feeling. But it's still a challenge because we have really crazy stuff going on yes. in life now. And it's so easy to be pulled back to the fear and the anxiety. And But it's just a breath away. And, and so I think it's, I'm so grateful that you wanted this to be the theme of today because it's a simple way to enter a whole different state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and of course, you know, it is, it is what can I do as an individual? What can you yes. do as an individual to help the collective? So it is, yes. it, is, it is in a way a responsibility coming from me, coming from every single one of you listening to this or watching this. What can you do to, to help heal the planet? What can you do to help heal what's happening on our planet? Yes. And it starts from within. And that's, I think that's what the, the most important thing is. What can we do to channel love? To yes. spread love? To share love? To shine? To radiate love? And, and then I, I, I believe some people say, but what can I do? What can I do? I'm only one person. You know, what can I do? But it starts from you. It starts from every single one of us. And that's the key vision of Rainbow Letters to Mother Earth. It's, it's to, to invite our children to remind us, but for us as adults, as role models, to spread love, rainbow love, colorful love, <laughs> to share it and, and express it through letters through poems through stories through art through mm -hmm. color through image uh, and i believe the times now we need that we, we need that kind of project that kind of collective community project that will tap into our hearts hearts and express that that power of rainbow love there absolutely i'm in <laughs> I'm on board. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful, beautiful, Chrisula. I Yeah, this is a, a marvelous initiative. And as a long time, as, as you know, as a long time rainbow lover myself, since the mid 70s, I became a rainbow kid um, and had rainbow decals on my car and on my our motor home and on the, the window in my apartment in New York City. Uh, rainbows were everywhere. And it was the name of a business that I had was, was rainbow art. And wow. um, so yeah, yeah, a long, long time ago. So I'm Fabulous. a dyed in the wool rainbowist. Yay, sure. rainbow warrior. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed, yes. indeed. Fabulous. Well, well, uh, huge gratitude to you, Bruce, for joining me here, for sharing your love, your 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 dedication, because I I know that you have been dedicated to this heart math, philosophy, practice, creating through your heart. So, mm. so thank you so much for, for bringing that out there for us as well to be inspired. You carry on creating and helping other artists 
creative spirits to bring their own creativity out through your trainings, through your workshops and overall, you know, through your songs. And now that I remembered, <laughs> I have heard Bruce singing a fabulous song. And I know that if you have been in the same event last September, you would have seen him. But if you haven't yet, I will include the link from a particular song, uh, Bless the Children, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and, and I will include that in the, with the description of, of, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, video recording. And you can actually go back and connect with the lyrics, connecting with the song, connect with, with Bruce's performance as well. Uh, and it is a song that I would love you to invite your children to, to listen to, to connect with as well. And then for that could be an inspiration for them to sit down at some point and express what they feel about Mother Earth, express how they feel, their vision, their hopes, their fears even, uh, and, and allow that to be a channel for them of inspiration. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Chrisula. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Lots of love from me, Chrisula, the Golden Muse, and from my dear friend and guest, Bruce Cryer. Thank you. <laughs>